So we'll continue here with our discussion of um, advantages of having root hairs and then we'll move into how water moves into a root radially towards the xylem. All right, so <clears throat> so what are some advantages for plants? Because not all plants have root hairs. Um, advantages of having root hairs. All right, we'll start with the idea here that you can see there's a, a, a specific, you know, a wider diameter here shown in this um, root, in the root itself, which is the darker white here, then uh, it has a, a larger diameter than these individual root hairs. So the diameter of the root hair, or yeah, that of the root hair, is less than that of the root. And so the the um, what the advantage is here is that the root hair has greater access to smaller diameter soil pores and channels, has more access basically to soil in general, soil by accessing. All right. And the second advantage here is that if we take a, a um, cross section through the, the diameter of the root, let's say we're we're looking we're comparing a, a plant without root hairs, without hairs versus the diameter with hairs. And we'll write this up here. And so that diameter, um, meaning the uh, or you could also refer to the contact between the, the root and the soil um, when there's no root hairs is much less than if we draw these root hairs out here increases the basically the diameter of the cylinder uh, for access to the soil um, but then remember all these little individual root hairs penetrate the soil separately um, instead of one continuous surface area, it's you know the surface area is dramatically increased as it follows the surface of each of these roots. So um, a dramatic increase in in, um, in surface area contact. So we'll just uh, write it here as uh, having root hairs increases the diameter of the cylinder. That's an I um, of root contact or root soil contact, which again reflects the increase in surface area um, for absorption. Now another thing to think about here, and I'm going to move this um, up here for a second, a little higher, because another way to look at this too is that remember um, there's going to be a gradient of water potential from uh, from the soil, the root surface, out into the soil, and so there's this region that we were to refer to as the the depletion zone, and this is going to also be really important when we talk about nutrients. The um, depletion zone <coughs> extends even wider out here from this cylinder of root plus root hairs. Um, so this is the depletion zone here and that's going to be basically allowing that um, soil water potential to extend even further out into the soil accessing more sources of water than when the um, because of establishing this water potential gradient then when the root has no uh, depletion has a smaller depletion zone so these are kind of related to this idea of increasing the diameter of the cylinder of the root um, and then we can see over here that we have an, an even uh, uh, you know additional feature that can be related to or attached uh, attach the root which are called mycorrhizae and mycorrhizae are basically a where a fungus um, interacts with the root in a mutualistic symbiosis so we'll write that in a mutualistic symbiosis and 
So what we see here are the um, even tinier, which you, I can't, you can't see from the diagrams we're seeing here, but, but mycorrhizal, um, the mycelia here, the hyphae, have an even smaller diameter than the root hairs. So having, you know, an even greater advantage to accessing smaller capillary um, channels and so forth. And so mycorrhizae having being a completely separate organism can can grow out into the soil without an you know this extra cost of growth to the plant uh, accessing smaller diameter soil pores increasing the volume of soil access and being a whole different organism it also you know accesses nutrients differently than roots in that it can um, you know um, excrete or, or um, secrete rather digestive enzymes to to break down organic matter into inorganic materials that the that can then be taken up so mycorrhizae add an even additional function that the plant t can take advantage of and this is a mutualistic relationship because the fungus is providing nutrients to the, and water to the plant especially when nutrients content is low uh, that's an advantage to plants um, while the plant brings carbon to the fungus. So it's a win-win situation. Over here we see the extensive <coughs> mycelial network and on the right hand side we can see that interface between the fungus and root for an ectomycorrhiza. So we'll talk about ectomycorrhizae versus um, arbuscular mycorrhizae more when we talk about chapter, uh, when we get into chapter 3 for nutrient uptake. All right now the, the next um, topic that we're going to see here in this um, recorded lecture has to do with the question of now now that the water has reached the, so the root surface um, how does water basically get transported or diffuse let's say diffuse um, from the root epidermis to the root or the root hair to the root xylem okay and so we looked at this diagram in the past when we were looking at basic plant anatomy where we defined the symplast and I used those terms in the last um, recorded lecture as well the symplast where the uh, cytoplasm streams from one cell to the next through plasmodesmata if you recall that um, versus the apoplast here which it, it contains the cell wall and middle lamellae so then in the next diagram we can see that the green arrow uh, again refers to transmembrane transport where there is a selectively permeable membrane involved in the transport of materials across the membrane into the symplast. Then there's symplastic transport that once the materials are in the the water and nutrients are within the protoplast that they can stream through the uh, plasma desmata, symplastic transport, versus the apoplastic transport just from through the cell walls because remember the cell walls contain cellulose and hemicellulose and pectins which are all very uh, hydrophilic and, um, um, and um, contain a high volume of water. Alright so now let's take a look at the radius of a root so you can see on the top whoops top right or top left figure here we're taking a section of the root showing uptake of water from the root hair across the radius towards the vascular cylinder and that's been blown up here in this diagram um, and then we'll see an, a, a smaller section of this diagram blown up over here on the right all right so uh, there's two different pathways that are highlighted here but the first thing that we did or want to do is to make sure that we can identify different parts of the root so you might need to review these these um, parts here the root hair the epidermis the cortex is down here a part of the cortex that is shown in the the, the red is the endodermis and this bracket here is showing us some cells that are parenchyma cells I believe here that are part of the paracycle 
this diagram doesn't show the pericycle extending out uh, beyond xylem, but the vessel elements for xylem are shown in blue, and usually the pericycle is a layer just interior to the endodermis. All right. Um, so if we were to trace water through the root uh, from the epidermis to the xylem, um, we looked in class at a, um, a tracing uh, exercise where we s kind of put these terms in order. So let's say we start with the root epidermis. And I'm just going to list in random order here the other parts that we want to pay attention to and put in order. And the last was the paracycle in this list. So you want to make sure that you can uh, enter these or, or put these in order by the, the number that goes with the choice um, and then we can continue on with our different kinds of transport that we see here. So the pink line, so I'm not going to give these answers because we did this in class, uh, the, or we will be doing this in class if we haven't done it already. The pink line um, or let's see actually let's start with the blue line represents the transport where we have the materials crossing the cell membrane entering the root hair passing through the epidermis there and then through the cortex uh, and and by passing from cell to cell these uh, materials are passing through the plasma desmata so you can see it passes right through the endodermis the pericycle and into the vessel element so that pathway would be the symplastic transport or pathway, whereas the pink line shows us um, transport through the cell wall of the root hair and the materials, the water and nutrients simply just scoot between the um, adjacent epidermal cells within the cell wall here still um, between the cortex cells and then it arrives here to the at the uh, at the endodermis and then we have these thickened purple um, blockades essentially that um, divert water movement then through this plasma membrane of the endodermis and once so this is the point at which um, water and nutrients have to pass through a selectively permeable membrane once it does that it enters the endodermis and then can pass directly into the uh, xylem or through the paracycle to the xylem is which is what we're going to more likely emphasize here so the point here by comparison comparing these the apoplastic route versus the symplastic route is that at some point whether it's here or it could be uh, further along the way where um, water enters the symplast as you can see in these arrows eventually has to cross a, a cell membrane a plasma membrane so there's never this open floodgate of water directly into the xylem and that's going to protect the plant from allowing just you know anything harmful um, substances to pass through uh, to, to enter the plant. Now the next thing that we want to emphasize here is that blockade that we mentioned in the endodermis and that Casparian strip is a layer of or a uh, is the infiltration by suberin in the cell wall all the way up to the plasma membrane of the endodermis. So we talked about suberin a little bit before, suberin being that um, waxy sort of hydrophobic substance that penetrates the cell wall here blocking water movement so that the water, water and nutrients have to pass through this selectively permeable membrane. Um, and so in this blow up of the, the diagram you can see suberin uh, is found within the transverse walls here uh, surrounding the cell. It's found within the radial walls of the, of the cells, um, but the longitudinal walls here and here are, are open so that water can, you know, can enter ac across the, um, the semi-permeable membrane at this point. We should be pointing out at this point here.